That's HQ calling. Uh, this is LARP Raider 69. Hello, Agent 69. We have a new mission for you. What's the target? His code name is Reaver. He's carrying an ultra cryptic cyber code device tool thing. Retrieve it from his body. He also shares his location on Snapchat, so we've sent that over to you. He's a bit of an idiot. Got it. He also doesn't peel his cheese sticks, and he larves harder than the internet comments are ready for. Wait. He doesn't peel his cheese sticks? Oh, I'm killing this fucker. Stick wrapper, fresh tracks, sign of flat range LARPing, cardboard targets as well, all less than lethal hits, must be our guy, he's close. HQ, this is LARP Raider 69. I've got the target in my sights. Permission to take the shot. LARP Raider 69, you have the green light. Take the shot. Fuck that cheese biting bitch up. Roger that, HQ. Taking the shot. That's like putting the wrapper back onto your Snickers before. <laughs> LARP HQ, he Swiss cheese. <laughs> Where'd you put it? Where'd you put the cipher? Banned chocolate drink. <laughs> I'll take that. There it is. The cipher. HQ, I've retrieved the ultra cryptic cyber tool device thing. Returning to base. I really hope Nicole from HQ heard my cheese joke. Are digital scopes the future? Should we be replacing our current scopes with digital scopes? Should we be ditching our performance glass and then bolting on these digital cameras onto our rifle? Digital scopes have some great features, but as far as performance goes, I don't think they're there just yet. However, if you are looking for some extra features to put onto your rifle, perhaps some night vision, ranging, things like that, then a digital scope might be a direction you want to go. Just know, overall performance is not going to compare to one of your more high budget scopes. So if you're interested in some of this, let's jump in. So what is it? This is an ATN 4K X Pro. This is a 4K, this is a 4, this is an ATN 4K, what? This is a ATN 4K X Pro. God, that's a horrible name. Holy shit. This is their five to 20 model. So uh, five times magnification all the way out to 20. So let's talk about the pros and cons of a digital scope versus a traditional glass scope. One of the biggest benefits for a digital scope is utilizing it for some sort of night vision purpose. Industrial strength, night vision goggles. Holy Santa Claus shit. There are night vision analog scopes, but their price point is going to be much higher than the digital scope entry level price. This ATN 4K X shot 5000 other airsoft name, it was about $500. While having some night vision clip on for your scope, is usually gonna run you about $2,000 plus 
depending on the setup that you're getting. So if you're looking for some entry level night vision, you wanna do a little night hunting, hog hunting, coyote hunting, whatever it might be, a digital scope is going to be a very cost effective way to get into that. Now, just understand, it is not going to have the same performance as an analog night vision device. We have to make that clear. However, it does have that capability, a capability that a standard scope would never be able to do. So night vision capability, pro. However, for your night vision feature to be useful on your digital scope, past something close to about 50 yards, you're going to have to bolt on a lighthouse's worth of infrared light onto your rifle. With that comes weight. As you can see with mine, I've got an infrared illuminator, I've got another IR flashlight, and I've got another IR flashlight. You might see that as overkill. However, in order to get to a certain distance, anywhere past two, 300 yards, you absolutely need some sort of IR spotlight. With that comes weight. Fuck, that's frightening. Anybody that says that their digital scope can see in the dark without any sort of uh, infrared light, they're bullshitting you. They're out there in a city where there's a whole bunch of light pollution and then they're looking out the window. Oh wow, I can see in the dark. There's a bunch of street lamps and things like that providing ambient light. But if you are planning to go out into the wilderness, go hunting where it's more complete darkness, especially if you don't have a lot of moon or starlight, then no, you are going to need that infrared light in order to see properly or kind of at all. I'll go ahead and put in some B-roll footage for you so you can see how much of a difference the infrared makes. So as far as infrared light is concerned, that's definitely more of a con. The controls for your digital scope are oftentimes going to be pretty different than a traditional scope. That can be a pro or a con. Oftentimes it's just a learning curve. If you have a lot of time behind traditional glass, then it is going to feel a little bit funky for you. Zooming is a knob on the side. And, and adjusting those types of things. So it will be a learning curve. So that could be a con for you. If you don't have as much time or you're not an absolute boomer and then you can learn to use a piece of technology, then you'll be able to learn just fine. It's not hard. However, the menus can be a little intensive because they add a lot of shit in there. So it is important if you're gonna be getting one of these to become very familiar with your controls. That way you're not like clicking through it when you're out in, in the field trying to hunt. Oh man, HQ never lets us have these. With those controls comes the ability to save profiles. If you're shooting a lot of different ranges, as well as maybe a lot of different types of ammo, you can save profiles within your scope for every different range, as well as every different ammo type that you use. So if you have got some trash ammo that you like to go out to the range with, you can zero that for 100, 200, 300, 400, and you can save all those profiles in. Then instead of having a dope book or having to go through the clicks, you just load the new profile. Then when you switch ammo, you can have the exact same set of dopes, but save differently at 100, 200, 300, 400, whatever you prefer to shoot at. So instead of cranking down on those dials, all you gotta do is go into the menu, select 500 yards because you went from zero to 500, and then boom, you've got your dope set up so you can land a first shot hit with much more likelihood. So that is definitely a pro. So because it is a camera lens and then you are looking through a screen which is on the back of the scope, the image quality is not going to be as clear as a traditional scope. So that's definitely a bit of a cone. However, it is a little bit more clear than the B-roll footage that we put in, but not quite as much especially at longer ranges because it's a digital zoom instead of an optical zoom, you really start to see that image decrease and it starts to become a little bit fuzzy and blown out. So that's definitely a bit of a con. Furthering that because it is a digital camera with a screen, when swapping over to the night vision mode, the refresh rate on the screen and camera is much lower because the exposure time is higher in order to let in as much light as possible. If you understand how cameras work, that makes sense. If it doesn't, just know that the refresh rate is a little bit slower, so it feels a little framey. It's maybe close to about 20 frames per second or so. So you're going to immediately feel that frame change. As opposed to an analog night vision sight, you would not have that at all. However, the price difference is extreme. So that's gonna be one of those trade-offs. It's not trying to be that. So as far as that is concerned, that is absolutely a con, but only kind of, because it's cheap. 
Next is the ability to record directly from your scope. This is a pretty cool feature. So if you're out there hunting, you wanna be able to save that footage because you like to put it on your Instagram and, and show off for the boys, whatever it is, you can go ahead and record that footage. Some of them have recoil activated recording like this ATN. So you fire, it detects the recoil and it records 15 seconds prior to the shot and 30 seconds after the shot. So really you have that whole shot in view. Very, very cool technology. You can also just record for an X amount of string of time. It goes immediately onto an SD card and that can be saved to the phone or to your computer, whatever way you've got it set up. So that's a pretty cool feature. Along with that is the ability to stream directly from a phone. So if you're shooting and your friend, your shooting buddy wants to see that, or maybe you're watching someone shoot and you're utilizing it as a shooting aid, you're trying to teach them how to, how to shoot, then you can be watching through the scope as they are, and then you can see exactly what they're seeing. So that's just a kind of a fun feature. I don't think that's something that's totally critical, but it is kind of cool. So as far as recording goes, that is absolutely a pro for the digital scopes. However, if you're like me, you don't have any friends to share your POV with, so it doesn't really matter. It's a bit of a con. The digital scope has a plethora of different options within the scope. Sometimes this can be a little bit overwhelming, so it is important to understand and know your scope. This can go all the way from changing your reticle shape and color, as well as how your zoom characteristics work. You can also utilize your phone to change these features. This is a little bit easier than utilizing the onboard controls of the scope. However, it all can become very cumbersome if you're working in direct sunlight, you've got a lot going on. Maybe it's in the winter and you're utilizing gloves. So. It's a pro and a con really. If you're very familiar with it, then it's absolutely a pro. This scope is an electronic. What that means, it's sensitive to water as well as the fact it has to be charged. With this particular scope, it does not allow you to replace the batteries. It has a built-in lithium ion battery, which means that you can't replace it. So if you get out into the field and the battery's dead, there's nothing you can do with the exception of you bring some sort of uh, portable battery charger like the ones that you use for your phone, those can work, but you do have to wait for that to charge up. If you're using some sort of digital scope, I recommend always having one of those on hand and making sure that you're, what's the word? Frugal? Frugal? No. And making sure you keep up on your scopes charging. That way you don't ever end up with a dead scope. With that also comes sensitivity to water. A traditional scope, it's gonna usually be nitrogen purge, so it's gonna be fine. Water's not gonna be an issue. However, with this one, it is gonna be more sensitive to water. They say it's rain resistant or rain proof. However, if the ports are left open or you're like me and one of the port covers got ripped off, it's really not gonna be as protected from rain. So that is something to keep in mind. They might be a tad bit more sensitive. They probably are. So that is absolutely a con. Con! Ooh, ooh. Oftentimes these digital scopes have a lot of built-in metrics as far as direction, elevation, angles. However, mine stopped working the first time I got it, so. Con. It can be paired with things like a digital range finder. You can pair that and sync it with the scope. And so that paired with your profile saved for your different ranges, your likelihood and speed to be able to land a first shot hit is substantially higher, especially if you get really good at manipulating those controls and you know how to swap to those different profiles very quickly. So that's a pro or a con if it breaks like mine. Is a digital scope better than a traditional scope? No, not really. It has some of those clarity issues and it's not quite there, it has some drawbacks. However, if you're planning to use this as a dedicated night vision scope, then I can see this having a lot of value for you because a traditional scope is not gonna have a prayer at ever being able to see in complete darkness like this does. Now you do have to set it up and do your due diligence. That's the term I was looking for. Do your due diligence to charge your batteries. You have to do your due diligence to making sure that this is set up to be effective. If you're hunting animals and things like that, that's fine. If say you're on a Minecraft war and you're putting out a beam of IR illumination and you've got a bunch of people hunting you with night vision, then you're gonna give yourself away. But that's a very nuanced thing. I can tell you with this scope, uh, I took it out to about 750 yards was the max that I could land hits. Now, it is important to know I was shooting shitty Russian steel cased ammo out of this Ruger Precision. So I do feel like as far as that's concerned, that's great. 
I got out to 500 and was able to land every shot. I think I missed one in 10 at that on a reduced side steal. And then once I got out to about 750 yards, I was hitting one in three shots. I think that was more of an ammo and me as a shooter than the scopes problem. So I can tell you that at range, it does perform. So thanks for coming to the Reaver Approach channel. I hope this was maybe a little bit informative as far as digital scopes. They're a little bit more of a nuanced topic that doesn't get brought up a lot. And oftentimes they get a little bit of hate, maybe more so than they deserve, but they are a pretty cool item. And for particular applications, they're fun to use. Hello, thanks for joining me. Editor Reaver here. I wanted to share something with you because I feel like you deserve it. But first, a refreshing beverage to wet my palate. Oh, God, that's awful. After filming this video, and as I attempted to get B-roll of the night vision footage, my scope did freeze completely. It was unable to be reset, and I had to wait for the battery to die twice before being able to turn my scope back on. If this happened in the field, I dare say this would be detrimental because it did take about 10 hours for the battery to die. This is rather disappointing. My only recommendation for you is these are not meant for serious work. At least this ATN 4K Excite Pro, I got that one on the first try. I would not sign it up for serious work. That was a bit of a con. Con! <sighs> Wait, we almost forgot. Comment of the week. Ooh. This one was brought to you by this guy. Lucky fucker 23. So this was in reference to my invert setup, which is just a micro chest rig. Then be realistic with yourself. That way you're not living in some fairyland because oh, I'll have my plate carrier when an accident happens. And apparently he didn't like the poncho I was wearing. I, I'm guessing that was it, but maybe he just didn't like my face. Anyway, I love your cosplay setup. It will look great while you play your magic cards and Pokemon shit. Talking about fairyland, that's where you come from. Great comment, Lucky. If you ever wanna come play Magic and Pokemon, my mom will come pick you up and have chicken tenders ready. Hit me with a DM. Love to see ya. Consider subscribing. Do a barrel roll.